To put this gospel into context, John the baptizer expects the Messiah to bring God's judgment upon the earth. From a prison cell, he wonders whether Jesus is the one who will do this. Jesus' response indicates that God's reign is indeed being fulfilled already through healing and restoration. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Now when John heard in prison about the things that Christ was doing, he sent word by his disciples to Jesus asking, Are you the one who is to come, or should we look for another? Jesus responded, Go report to John what you hear and see. Those who are blind are able to see. Those who were crippled are walking. People with skin diseases are healed. Those who are deaf now hear. Those who were dead are raised up. The poor have good news proclaimed to them. Happy are those who don't stumble and fall because of me. Now when John's disciples had gone, Jesus spoke to the crowds about John. What did you go out to the wilderness to see? A stalk blowing in the wind? What did you go out to see? A man dressed up in refined clothes? Look, those who wear refined clothes are in royal places. What did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and even more than a prophet. He is the one of whom it is written, Look, I am sending my messenger before you, who will prepare your way before you. I assure you that no one has ever been born greater than John the baptizer, yet whoever is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. I will never forget the day that I discovered what a crocus was. Having moved from Florida to Chicago for seminary, I knew that I would need to buy a winter coat for my first real winter up north. So I went out and I bought a knee-length parka and I promptly began wearing it in (laughs) mid-September. And my classmates and friends kind of shook their heads and they said, Just wait. And of course they were right. And by the time February rolled around, I really thought I was going to die. (laughs) But one afternoon, while I was walking my dog, I saw this tiny little green shoot peeking out of the snow. And then when I came back a couple days later, there was a beautiful, tiny little purple flower right at the end of that shoot. And an inexplicable sense of joy bubbled up to the surface within me. And I almost jumped up and down, and I couldn't Google fast enough to find out what that little flower was. A crocus. In the middle of winter, Out of nowhere, unexpected joy. From Isaiah chapter 35. The wilderness will rejoice and blossom like the crocus. It will burst into bloom with rejoicing and singing. Out of nowhere, completely unexpected. Now the chapter, chapter 35 of Isaiah, functions in a similar way. The book of Isaiah itself is to split up into three different parts. And the first part, chapters 1 through 39, is referred to as First Isaiah. And in First Isaiah, there are lots of descriptions in harsh and disheartening language about how God's people have fallen short and have not been faithful to God, and the consequences that then arise out of that. Death and despair, dead ends, and exile. First Isaiah says, even the land itself will suffer. A land once full of promise and blessing will become a wasteland. This is the tone throughout 39 chapters of 1st Isaiah, one after another after another, except for one chapter. 
chapter 35. Out of nowhere, completely unexpected joy. The wilderness will rejoice and blossom. Fountains and streams will spring up in the desert. Everlasting joy will be upon the heads of God's people. Grief and groaning will flee away. There is nothing that precipitates this chapter. There's no change in God's people's behavior. There's no reason that they should deserve this new vision of life and new hope. It almost seems out of place. Almost as out of place as a crocus in the snow. But often this is exactly how God's action comes to us. Completely unprompted. Out of nowhere. Surprising grace and unexpected joy. Now today is the third Sunday of Advent, as I mentioned, known as Gaudete Sunday or Joy Sunday, which is often why we have a rose-colored candle on some Advent wreaths. And on this Sunday, halfway through our subdued, reflective pilgrimage of Advent waiting, we find ourselves rejoicing. This is a day set aside in the middle, seemingly out of nowhere, for celebrating the joy of the Savior who is coming and the Savior who is already with us. The one who brings life and hope and healing and wholeness. The one who brings the very presence of God. Now, each of our assigned readings for today on Joy Sunday depict with beautiful imagery the unexpected joy that the presence of God brings. Blossoms in the desert, streams in the dry land, a safe road home, the lowly lifted up, wholeness restored, blind eyes being able to see, deaf ears being able to hear. And even as we hear those words and those visions, it is important to also note briefly that there's some ableism that's here as a part of these texts. Assumptions about what is normal or good when it comes to physical abilities. We know that scripture was written in a particular time, a particular context, And the prophetic imagination at that time viewed wholeness in a particular way. But definitions of wholeness change over time. And indeed, definitions of wholeness vary between each of us based on our own lived experiences. And just as wholeness means something different to each of us, so too can joy find us in different ways as well. In fact, part of what our gospel reading gets at today is this idea of reframing our expectations. We've fast-forwarded a few weeks from last week. John the baptizer is no longer proclaiming prepare the way, but instead is imprisoned. And he's hearing bits and pieces of Jesus' ministry from behind bars, and he's wondering if he got it right. Is this the one whom we've been waiting for? Or are we to look for another? Did I get it right because he's not exactly what I was expecting? John the baptizer, like everyone else, expected the Messiah to bring military might and military power over the oppressive Roman Empire, raising the Jewish people up to statuses of power and wealth. But instead, Jesus reverses expectations by being an entirely different sort of Messiah. So when Jesus is asked, are you the one? In regular Jesus fashion, he doesn't give a clear answer, but instead asks a question. What do you see? 
What do you hear? What have you observed in the world because of me, because of God's presence? What wholeness is sprouting up? What new life and hope is breaking forth from despair? Where is there surprising grace and unexpected joy? That is where the presence of God is. In momentous, life-altering experiences of joy, but also, perhaps, even more frequently, in those day-to-day blessings that grace us and remind us who holds us fast. I received an example of one of these beautiful moments of joy that make us grateful to be alive. I got it through a text message from one of Good Soil's friends, George Andrews. He texted me this week and sent a picture of him and his sister and his mom, Helen, as they together celebrated Helen's 98th birthday. I want to share that picture with you. George gave me permission. Can we put that back up there? Beaming, joyful, just to have the time together. George's text to me read, What joy and happiness to be celebrating Mom's 98th birthday today. Thank you, God, for your blessings and miracles. Now, back in September, George got a call that his mom, Helen, suffered a medical emergency, and they didn't know how long she would have. And so George texted me asking for prayers. Helen has been on our prayer list ever since. He packed up his things. He grabbed his dog, Friedel. He jumped in his car, and he drove straight to Little Rock, Arkansas. And George has been there since September, every day. In October, Helen entered hospice. Sometimes she has good days. Sometimes she has more challenging days. But together, they take it one day at a time. George is grateful to have the time that they've been able to share together and the unexpected joy of sharing birthday celebrations, his birthday in November and her birthday just this past week. Out of nowhere. Unexpected joy. May God give us fresh eyes and spirits to see and experience the surprises of God's unexpected joys this Gaudete Sunday and every day. Amen.